In cinematography, teal and orange refers to the grading palette in which the mid-levels of the frame are pushed towards the warm color spectrum, while the shadows, in which less important information is stored, are cooled down and darkened. This could be seen from the first time in Leonardo da Vinci's The Mona Lisa, in which the main character at the center is made up of warm, orangish colors, and while the landscape in the background is cool, misty, and greenish. This has the effect of drawing the audience's eyes immediately to the character's face, rather than the background. But why is it that we immediately see the warmer colors rather than the cooler ones? A lot of it has to do with evolution. You see, at the beginning of evolution, prehistoric man had one aim, and that was to survive. And to survive, he had to overcome threats. Now, if you look at the color wheel, it can be easily separated into two perfect halves. One of the cool colors, and one of the warm colors. The warm colors represent everything that is on Earth. It is tangible, it is physical, it is alive, and can be potentially be a threat. While the cool colors represent what is intangible, the untouchable color of the sky and the water. In a 2012 study, a group of about 200 people were asked to associate different colors to a list of different sentiments, and the results that they got were quite surprising. 42% of the people selected blue when asked what their favorite color was. And when asked what color they associated most with fear and terror, 41% said red, and 38% said black. Coincidentally, those are the colors of fire. And blue is the color of the quintessential intangible thing, the sky. There definitely seems to be a link between color, temperature, and sentiment. However, for us on Earth, that is a result of our interaction with the objects in our environment, which all reflect the light from the two emitters that we've had available to us, fire and the sun. Fire especially has had a huge impact on the way that we perceive colors and our objects. Thus, we perceive red as hellish and brutal and hot, while blue as cool and heavenly. However, what if we look into the radiant emitter itself and go much hotter than fire? It is thus necessary to introduce the concept of incandescence and black bodies. Now, a black body might seem like a complicated concept, but actually, it just means a body that absorbs all radiation that is incident upon it. On Earth, there are not that many examples, although some people have made paints that have tried to replicate it. However, there are some things that can be modeled as almost perfect black bodies, and one of those is stars. German physicist Wilhelm Wien deduced that the hotter a black body gets, the higher the frequency of radiation that it emits. If you think of heating a fire poker, at first it goes dull red, as you heat it more, the red brightens, turns into yellow, and then finally goes to white, and if you heat it at ridiculous temperatures, it might go to blue. For astronomers, this is incredibly useful as just from looking at a picture from a telescope of a galaxy far, far away, they can tell what the main temperature is. Of course, they have to take into account redshift and the expansion of the universe, but nonetheless, it's still quite incredible. Two Austrian physicists, Josef Stefan and Ludwig Boltzmann, derived an equation which made Wien's law much more useful. They managed to find a direct proportional relationship between the radiant emittance, or power per unit surface area of the black body, with the temperature to the fourth power of that black body. The constant of proportionality, sigma, is now known as the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Since the radiant emittance of the black body is equivalent to the power per unit area of the black body, it could be written as such with a power represented as the luminosity, which is of the same unit. Now, since the black body is sphere-shaped, we can use the equation for the area of the sphere, and rearrange the equation 
so that we have the luminosity on one side. Now we have an equation relating the luminosity, radius, and temperature of a black body. This is a huge step, as astronomers often want to know the radius and size of a distant star or galaxy. Astronomers deal with incredibly large sizes and time frames, so sometimes it's easier to express these units in terms of other physical units. When dealing with radii, it's very easy to express the radius of a distant star in terms of the radius of the sun. And this equation does that very easily. If we write the equation for the sun, as the sun is a star and a black body itself, and then we divide the two equations by each other, we now have an equation that is relating the luminosity of the distant star in terms of the luminosity of the sun, the radius of the distant star in terms of the radius of the sun, and the two temperatures which can be determined by color using Wien's law. If the distance between us and the distant star is known, then finding the relative luminosity is very easy. You can just do it by looking through a telescope. And thus, just by looking at the color and luminosity of a star, one can determine its radius, which is incredibly powerful for astronomers. And one must wonder whether our modern predilection for blue is also a result of our ancestors looking up at the night sky and the bright blue celestial bodies, and giving them the same respect that they gave the bright blue sky, even though at a heat much higher than the flames that enveloped their own Hades. Either way, I'm sure that Leonardo da Vinci would love to know that the study of color has allowed us to look deep into the far reaches of our visible universe. So thank you for watching.